Okay, so as you can tell by the soft jazz playing in the background, it's time to talk about limit points in metric spaces. <coughs> so in the book, after we get the definition of a limit point and a closed set in an arbitrary topological space, we're given as, as an example in that first paragraph um, to think about limit points in metric spaces. So I thought I would sort of tease that idea out a little bit and talk about how it works. So given a metric space, <coughs> so here's a metric space, X. Um, and a subset of that metric space, so a subset A of that metric space, we say that W is a limit point of A if there exists a sequence, um, an infinite sequence in fact, of points. Um, so for each of the integers, I could put i in the natural numbers. Uh, with each of those points in A, um, such that the limit of that sequence of points is equal to W. Now, in just a minute, I will talk about uh, what I mean by this thing here, what I mean by the limit in more detail. But let me first talk about what I mean here by the limit of a sequence in, in sort of um, um, a more nuts and bolts fashion. So here's a picture. We have a, a metric space. That's my square here, my standard metric space. We have a subset of the metric space. That's A. This is my subset of my metric space. And we have a sequence of points in A here. So we have x1, we have x2, we have x3, x4, etc. There will be an infinite number of them, so I can't draw them all. And what I really mean is that um, these points are getting closer and closer to W as the index goes higher and higher. So they will limit out to W. So they're sort of bearing down on W. And you can't separate W from this sequence of points. If I draw any open set around W, I'm going to capture, well, actually an infinite number of points in this sequence. No matter how small I draw this ball around W or how small I s draw this open set around W, I'm going to capture an infinite number of points in this sequence. And if I can do that, then I say that W is the limit of this sequence. Now let me talk a little bit about um, this definition here where it says where the limit as i goes to infinity of xi is equal to W if for all epsilon greater than zero there exists an n so that the dis distance between xn and W is less than epsilon for all n greater than n. Now that might seem like a difficult um, definition to parse, but I think in, I can make it kind of clear and you should be able to do the rest of the work. Suppose I made a list of numbers which was just the distance between x1 and w, the distance between x2 and w, the distance between x3 and w. Obviously I could continue that so I have an infinite list of numbers. Remember that the distance is always um, a number, a real number. That's how a metric is defined. So there's a actual real number distance here, real number distance here. And what this definition says is given an epsilon greater than zero, in other words, given some small number, whatever small number you want to throw at me, I can find a point in this sequence um, an n. An n is just going to be some point in this sequence. So um, it might be out here, d. So dot, 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 we continue the sequence, d, x sub capital N, um, w. I can find a point in this sequence so that um, the distance from x small n to w is always less than 
epsilon as long as we're further along in the sequence than n. In other words, as long as n is bigger than capital N. If n happened to be, if capital N happened to be 100, for example, then the distance between x a thousand, x sub a thousand, or the thousandth point in the, in the sequence, and w would have to be less than epsilon. Okay? So <coughs> that should get you started on thinking about how this works. So there's kind of a converse to this as well, which he, uh, the author gives a little bit of short shrift to. I have no idea why my printer just started up. And that is, if we know something is the limit point of some subset A of a metric space, so I forgot to draw my metric space. Let me draw my metric space here. Here's my metric space. That's x. And here's my set A. And we know W is already um, a limit point. So we should have a, a sequence in A that, that converges to W. How can we... How can we find this sequence? Well, there's an easy way to do this if you're in a metric space. Now, this isn't possible in any arbitrary topological space, but a metric space has nice properties. And what you basically do is you can create an infinite sequence by looking by for, for each i. So, for, for example, when i is equal to 1, we draw the ball of radius 1 around w, and we pick some point in here, x1. <coughs> and then, or no, sorry about that, x1 has to be in A. So we pick some x1 in that ball intersect A. And then we can draw the ball of radius 1 half, and we can pick an x2 in there, we can draw a ball of radius a quarter, we can pick an x3 in there, and obviously, I mean a third, and obviously I can continue this forever, and I'll get a sequence where x1 is in the ball of radius 1 over 1, turn it, I'm getting a lot of email, which is 1, w, the in, in other words, the unit ball intersect A, x2 is an element of the ball of radius 1 half around w intersected with a. x3 is an element of the ball of radius 1 third around w intersected with a. And I can continue this process, obviously, until I get to my arbitrary xi, which is in the ball of radius 1 over i w intersect a and by this process I can construct my sequence xi i equals 1 2 3 dot 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 with the limit as i goes i goes to infinity of xi equal to w now there's one small caveat here, and that is in each case I have to choose um, something other than W <coughs> because I don't want to actually end up accidentally constructing the, the constant sequence. So I really should, on each of these, I should put minus W minus W. So I'm not picking W as one of, W can't occur here. And there's your, there's your method of constructing a sequence that limits to a point in, in any um, metric space.